up YouTube and I'm so happy to be back from uh, Washington DC and Kings Dominion so that I can get back to uploading videos to you guys um in this video I will be ranking every roller coaster at Kings Dominion and giving an overall park review based off like food flat rides all that um the flat well actually I guess I'll go ahead and do the food and flat rides and stuff because um I didn't or I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna forget about those um the food was good I did not go into Kings Dominion expecting a lot and it exceeded my expectations I'll give it a 7 out of 10 that's all I have to say about that um next is the like shows I guess I didn't really watch shows so I'll just give it a 5 out of 10 um next we have the flat rides now Kings Dominion doesn't have any like too many like standout flat rides they removed one of them to pit, put Tumbilly, which I would rather Tumbilly than that flat ride. The flat ride was pretty much Tumbilly, like it rotated like this. I, I guys, I don't know. I'm a flat ride GP. I don't know nothing. I, all I know is roller coaster. I'm just a roller coaster goofy. Um, yeah, I give the flat rides a eight out of ten because they have that tall drop tower and the beryllium i think it's like the swing with the rotating like seat thing i don't know uh still eight out of ten good flat rides um now is the standout part of pretty much all amusement parks the roller coasters now king's dominion has some very good roller coasters but they also have some very bad roller coasters so I'll just be ranking them from where's the best. I know the park the the park marks it markets it as thirteen roller coasters and it is thirteen roller coasters because racer counts as two roller coasters, two different ride experience, two different stations, all that. But I'm gonna be counting it as one because it's basically the same thing. And uh yeah, whatever. Um, coming in at number 12, we have the Great Pumpkin Coaster. It's a kitty coaster. I give it a 5 out of 10 for kitty coaster because it's a kitty coaster. Um, at coming in at 11, we have Anaconda, Aero Looping Coaster. Now, I know you guys saw my other video, and I showed you guys how much I hate Aero, or how, how much I said I hate Aero. But guys, I was watching some videos from like Theme Park Predictions, or not Theme Park Predictions. I do watch them though. Oh, uh, like Coaster Studios and Coaster Journey and stuff. And they said Magnum is not that bad of a ride. Like it has good air time. And, and El Toro Ryan said this too. Especially in the Magic Feet. Because like you get like bruises on your thighs. It's almost like Airy Force One, but an older version. Um, But uh, Anaconda's not like that. That's just Magnum. Anaconda's just a bad ride. I don't really like it. And I don't think that much people like it. Um, the first draw's fun. You go underwater, which is cool. Have some good positives. Good pacing in the very first part of the ride. Like, the very beginning. And then, once you hit that brake run, it puts you at almost a stop. And then, you just lose all your speed. And it's rough and uncomfortable. Um, that's all I have to say about it. I'll give it a 4 out of 10. Uh, next ride is crazy because, like, Woodstock Express be Anaconda for me. I like Woodstock Express more. It has good air time. Uh, the lap bars. Well, I didn't ride the one at Kings Dominion, but it's probably the same. The lap bars at Carowinds, it kind of reminds me of, oh my gosh, bro, I forgot it. At Knobles, the Phoenix. Um, or Phoenix, my bad. Um, the lap bars are like up here it has that one bar it's not like the um uh it's not like the what made me cci it's not like cci these lap bars where they're like actual like individual lap bars that can be adjusted um woodstock express lap bars are like one lap bar for each for each train or row or seat i guess i don't know 
All I know if you get a lot of airtime. Okay, um, that ride gets a 8 out of 10. It's a great kitty coaster. Next, we have Apple's Apple. Wild Mouth. Not much to say about it. It gets a 4 out of 10. Um, next ride, we have Flight of Fear. Good launch. I thought it would be better, though. And um, I don't like the restraints. I give that ride a... I give it a 7 out of 10. Um, I just mainly because I just kept on getting disoriented in that building. It's not pitch black, which I kind of wish it was, but like, I kept on thinking, uh, I, I haven't, wa I don't really watch POVs of indoor roller coasters, so I can be like, take it completely or be caught completely off guard. But like, I knew there was a, um, a corkscrew, and I kept on thinking that corkscrew would happen. And it just never happened until like last minute. I thought, I kept on thinking it would be like right now and then now. And then it just kept on not happening. It kept on being like a left turn and then a right turn and a left turn and a right turn. And then it finally happened. I was just like, what? Alright, that's why it's higher than Anaconda and all the, like, well, you know why it's higher than all those. Um, I give that, I think I already raised it. I forgot. Uh, if I didn't, I give it a seven out of ten. Um, next we have Reptilian. Not much to say about it. It's a bobsled because bobs. There's not much to say about it because it's a bobsled. Bobsleds are just bobsleds. You don't get really thrilled. Ex but Reptilian was different. Like, well, it's the only bobsled I've been on. But like, I got airtime on some of those like l last turns of the ride. It was weird. I didn't get actual airtime, but like it felt like I was about to lift out my seat a little bit. Uh, I give it a out of eight out of ten. I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, next ride we have Racer Racer seventy five. I don't really know. I get King Zion and King Dominion's mixed up. Honestly, this ride underwhelmed me. I went in there thinking I was just good. I was just gonna be getting thrown out of my seat because all that ride is is the out and back way of airtime, and honestly, I got little to no airtime on that whole roller coaster. The main part I got airtime on was the drop. I got a back row ride, and that back row ride was just not airtime filled. I didn't ri even ride it in the morning, so it was running fast. It just didn't really impress me. I give it a five out of ten. Um, next ride is crazy. Backlot Stone Coaster beat the racer. Backlot Stone Coaster, honestly, I really like it. I don't even know why. It's just something fun about it. Um, I've gotten a back row ride on it and a front row ride on it. I think I enjoyed the whole experience more in the front, but the back had more, like, standout elements. Like, the launch in the front was better. But you got more airtime and whip in the back. So the launch, honestly, I was not expecting it. I thought it would be a calm family coaster, but the launch was surprisingly decent, like a little bit forceful. And then right after the launch, you have that tight, like triple helix, like helix, I think. And uh, it makes me gray out a lot, like almost, as, not as almost as much as Intimidator Fatal Five, but like a lot. Um, coming off of that, in the back row, you don't really get airtime, but you get, like, yanked over the drop coming off the triple helix. Honestly, I like that. It's a good drop. And then you have, like, S-curves, and I love laterals if you don't have shoulder strength. And that was amazing. I love those S-curves. Like, I was getting thrown from side to side. And then it had, like, a pointless turnaround that was there for no reason and then it had this airtime hill that gave no airtime and i was like i was like on the ride i was like oh airtime about to get airtime and then i was like oh never mind no airtime no airtime i was like bruh come on all right and then it uh just did a couple more pointless things and then it went into the like mid course launch mid ride scene uh, or show thing and that, that's a really good part of the ride, especially in the back row, because you get launched and you get yanked down that turn. Uh, I like it. In the front row, it's also good, because you get better visuals. Um, I like to feel the wind in your face on that. Of course not 
as much wind as like dragster like fury or i305 but like still good ride good experience um i don't really know what happens inside the tunnel because like i said i don't really watch in indoor povs but i know coming out of that tunnel in the back row i got ejector airtime like i'm serious it was crazy like you know where like it's kind of like a billboard but the, it's where the entrance is, where you walk over the ride. I got airtime coming out of the building, like, on that little dip. It was amazing. Like, in the back row, it was so good. In the front row, I didn't really get any airtime, but, like, it was so good. Downside, those lap bars, what in the world? Like, bruh. I, I don't, I, I'm not the biggest fan of them. Next, wait, did I give it a rating? Yeah, I think I did. 8 out of 10 if I didn't. Um, next ride, we have the Grizzly. Honestly, the Grizzly is so underrated. Me and my sister got, like, a middle row ride and a back row ride. The middle, I mean, yeah, the middle row ride and the back row ride was, like, a night and day difference. But it's also night and day difference from riding it at night and riding during the day. But, but that doesn't matter. Um, in the both of them gave very good airtime. Like that ride, gra well done, Gravity Group with the retracks. Like, I'm so happy you guys did that. Hurler needs something like that at Carowinds or RMC, but Cedar Fair has to be so stubborn and be like, I don't like you, Winchman. I don't like you, uh, RMC. Like, they don't like the top two manufacturers come on Cedar Fair. Just, I mean, at least we have them Perla now, I guess. Like, I feel like they have potential to be. Like Intamin, worse or better, which that's all the outcomes you can have. Uh, so that definitely does have the potential. Um, Gravity Group did a very good job. I mean, in the back row, going down that drop, I was pretty much standing up. And my sister said she was like blown away by that airtime. It's like Phoenix at Knobles. But it keeps me, I guess. Um, and then after the turnaround, you get more airtime. It's crazy. And then, like, going to the other turnaround, you got those tiny little bunny hills. And then you, it's, it's just a very good ride. It's so underrated. Like, I don't understand why you got, why, well, mainly Grizzly at California Spirit of America. That ride does not look that good. But, like, this Grizzly... Honestly, it's the most underrated roller coaster I've ever ridden right now. It's either that or Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. Um, it doesn't matter though. Uh, for a wooden roller coaster, I'm giving it a nine. For wood Woody's, I don't really have high expectations because Hurler at Carowinds is my only Woody besides Woodstock Express, and it's that's a kitty coaster. And Hurler is just, it's just like, uh, gives you. My green. Uh, it doesn't matter though. Um, Grizzly, what did I give it? I think I gave it, if I didn't rate it, I'm rating it a 9 out of 10. Next, we have Dominator. Dominator, honestly, I like it a lot. It's like an invert. If it, if an older invert was a lot smoother and bigger, I guess, like. Dominator kind of reminds me of Afterburn or Montu, just bigger. I really like it. Um, that doesn't really matter though. I give it a eight out of ten. I know I gave Grizzly a nine, but like it's because it's wooden. That's why. Dominator gets an eight out of ten. Dominator is still a better ride. That's why I have Dominator in third at Kings Dominion and Grizzlies in fourth. It doesn't matter though. Next we have. Um, top two. This park probably has the best top two, in my opinion, out of any amusement park in the world. Maybe besides Cedar Point, because Cedar Point is mad in school days. Like, this park, I-305 is in second, which is crazy, because, like, a Giga is in second. My home park, Giga is the best ride, no doubt, because Fear 305. Um, but it's cracked. Like, bruh, come on. Being 
you're supposed to do a lot. But that doesn't matter. Uh, let's talk about I-305. I-305 is... I don't understand. It's so intense. It's the most insane helicopter I've ever ridden. And honestly... It's very good. That's all I can say. It left me speechless. Um... Uh, the drop on it is amazing. I know that the drop on Fury and like every other B and M Giga and every other B and M Hyper probably have like the same amount of like float or air time going down the drop. But I feel like I feel more on Intimidator 305 just because the over the shoulder restraints like it's like connected to a lap bar kind of, and the the bar is just like a little bar like and it goes across like this and i feel like i feel more airtime on that drop than furies it might just be because that ride's steeper by like only four degrees so still very good drop and then the turn after the drop every time i wrote it i wrote it i got four rides on it it always made me gray out one of them i was like i couldn't see it all completely black but i knew I didn't black out because I knew where I was. I still had consciousness. Um, after that, it goes through some of the craziest things you'll ever experience. Like, it goes through just some snip snaps, just like this. But it goes. It also goes over some like speed hills. Like right after that turn, you go over this airtime hill that, like, some people say it gives like okay floaters. I feel like it gives borderline ejected like almost ejected i feel like it's like higher quality floater or low quality ejected but that doesn't really matter i really like that airtime hill that's like probably my favorite part of the ride no it's not my favorite part i like the snip snaps more um but like that the ride just keeps on getting better and better as it goes on in my opinion some other people might think it gets worse because they think that high positive moment is the best but I honestly like the snip snaps more because I like laterals. Now, and so I go through a huge air time hill, like 150 feet tall, like half the lift hill side. And then you go over like some really in intense snip snaps with like some like really low to the ground speed hills in between, in, like one of them. And then you go over this air time hill. I was expecting. Think, oh, this is what makes it this is what makes me mad and this is why Fury is a lot higher than I-305 for me bro that second airtime hill or third I guess if you count speed hill bro if those trains weren't there it would have given so much airtime like I felt it I felt the pace going over it and then I and then I was like why why are we slowing down so much come on i was like during that i was like come on where's all the air time like bruh but that doesn't matter it just slows the ride down a lot um then you go through like like half of the air time hill and then you snap suddenly and then turn and then you go through one final snip snap that's like i mean i understand why the trims are there because that would have been the craziest snip snap out of all of them and it's still even with them and it's at a slower pace but like I do see why the trims are there but come on like couldn't you have put them on the second air time hill so that I could have at least gotten some air time hill on one of them like come on Keith Smith and into me like come on but that doesn't matter because I do five is honestly a very great ride um the snip shops are amazing good air time I love the speed sensation. Unfortunately, because my, uh, my sister Nishi was too scared and I had to ride it with her, I was trying to get some back row and front row rides, but I didn't get either because she was too scared. And she was like, no, I'll definitely pass out if I get a back row ride on it. And she was still too, like, I don't know if you guys remember, in my top 10 bucket list roller coasters, which I'm so happy that I got one of them done, I-305. Um... She said she didn't even know if she was going to write it. So, I'm happy that she wrote it. I'm giving her applause for that. But, 
come on, why, like, you've already written it. Why can't you get some backup right now? I feel like if I wrote in the back row, honestly, I don't know what I would like more, that or Fury. It might be neck and neck. If those trends didn't exist on it, I think I would like Isaiah Fox more. But they do, so. Oh, uh, that doesn't matter. I give it a 9 out of 10. Now, you guys know the number one roller coaster in the park. The only one left. It makes sense. Because you guys know I love my airtime. And I always take airtime over laterals, positives, and any roller coaster element. Theming. Like, I'll take airtime over all of that. That's why I have Twisted Timbers as my number one in King's Dominion. Bro. This ride is Oh my gosh, like this ride's so insane. My sister was scared to ride it at first, like on the train when she was like, yo, I'm scared. We were in the back row, first, her first ever ride. I've ridden it five years ago, but I don't really remember it. And I don't know why this wasn't on my top 10 bucket list coaster. It was amazing. This ride trip, or right after the, uh, Bruh, I forgot what it's called. Barrel roll drop. You got that speed hill that gives some great laterals and airtime. And I love laterals without over the shoulder string. That's why I feel five laterals weren't my favorite, but like they're still great. I, I like Iron Glossy's laterals more, like especially on that wave turn. Bruh. Okay. Um. But that. Speed airtime hill gets airtime and laterals because it's just slightly going to the right, just a little bit. Um, then you have a pointless overmate that does absolutely nothing. I wish they put like an outer bank or something there instead. But then this is when the ride starts getting good. You go over a small speed hill, and then you have three back-to-back -back giant airtime hills in a row. Think of a B&M Hyper, but RMC. RMCs are only ejector airtime. That's what it's like. Just three back-to-back -back ejector air time hills. Like El Toro, if it was smaller and arm seed. It's amazing. And then you go through a cutback, and then you go through a small speed hill, and then you go through like a, a trick track double up. That element, bro, it felt like I was getting, like I just had a workout and I was getting my thighs massaged out. Like, oh my gosh, it was insane. And then you drop down through probably the most insane head chopper I've been on it's either that or Fury 325 in the underneath the um the uh never mind whatever um the head chopper right after the trick track double up on Twisted Timbers is insane it's so good and then you go up a uh, outer bank that's like a smaller version of Iron Gwazi that it's just amazing because if you watch off-ride footage of it, you see the pacing that it takes it at, and oh my gosh, it's insane. It, like, leaves bruises on your thighs. And then you come out of that, go over a ejector airtime hill, then you go through a, probably my favorite in, no, never mind, one of my favorite inversions, it's a barrel roll, it's so floaty, like, so graceful, like, you're just, like, floating there, forever. Not hang time from not very far. Or, yeah, whatever. Um, it's just so good. And then you go over two overbanks that don't really do anything, but they do a little bit. And then you go over like one last airtime hill or something. And then you hit the brakes. That ride's just so good. Oh my gosh. I can't even describe it. 10 out of 10 ride. That ride just proves it size does not matter because it just beat, beat out a 305 foot 90 mile per hour roller coaster. It's just, Twisted Timbers the airtime is just that good. It's kind of sad that like, Carolyn's can't get one. But, if they re, when California Great America's closes, rest in peace, we can get, if they relocate Railblazer to Carolyn's in the spot where the rapids are, which I don't think they'll do because they're already sending out surveys being like, what do you guys want? The rapids back, uh, like a log flume, 
or a water roller coaster. That's what they say, but it's really mock paddle splash. I would hope a mock paddle splash out of those, but like, just imagine Railblazer in that plot of land. You would have Fury 305, Railblazer, Copperhead Strike, Intimidator, not 305, unfortunately, and Afterburn all in the same part. Park. Like, that would be the, in my opinion, Carowinds is all they're lacking is an RMC. That's it. I don't really care about a modern motor roller coaster, which would be nice, but like something like the Voyage there, instead maybe. But that doesn't matter. If Carowinds had Railblazer right there, I would be lapping that thing so much. Like I would probably not r even ride Fury that much anymore, cause it's just that good. I think. Anyways, what was I talking about? I don't know. I guess I'll just end the video here. Thank you for watching this video, guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want more content about, like, Cedar Point, because I'm going there this summer, Dollywood, get some rides with Lightning Rod, Thunderhead, all that. Steel Vengeance, I'm excited for that. Um, but that's it, guys. Thank you. Make sure you comment down below what you guys think, what are the top rides at King's Dominion. And thanks for watching.